So I'm Jonathan Reynolds. I, I'm a teacher and researcher uh, at Oxford University at the University Side Business School, where I'm a director of the Institute of Retail Management there. I've been working in uh, retailing and related work for the last 30 years, and I'm particularly interested in planning and development for retailing, in multi-channel, and in innovation and entrepreneurship in the sector. So this report, I think, is a, a really interesting one in, in, in a number of respects. I think, first of all, it, uh, it highlights the real amount of churn that we see in openings and closures of independence. We've always known that uh, uh, the barriers to entry into retailing are relatively low, uh, but we also know, of course, now is the exit barriers are also quite low. So seeing 15,900 uh, openings uh, last year and 15,200 closures gives us a real sense of the turnover in businesses that, that lies behind that kind of number. And kind of Micawber-like, there's, uh, there's happiness when that net number is positive, which it has been for the last few years. But we shouldn't underestimate, I think, what lies behind that, which is the need to think about uh, the survival of those independent businesses. If we go back and look at those 15,900 openings in the, the next uh, three to four years, will those businesses still be there? Or will they have fallen prey to some of the challenges that we know affect independence, uh, like uh, business rates, like the costs of, of doing business in, in particular kinds of locations, and the high costs of labour and so on. I think what's also interesting about the report is that it, it uh, demonstrates very much the change in the mix of many high streets. So what we see uh, uh, in that data is uh, a shift away, in a sense, from comparison goods retailing in independent terms towards uh, leisure services and um, consumer service outlets. And if we reflect on the nature of that change, it's very interesting to see, for example, women's clothing shops in decline. It's also interesting to see, I think, convenience stores and uh, nail salons and tattoo parlours and so on in the ascendant. Should we complain about that? Well, that reflects, ideally, consumer demand. It also reflects, of course, the kind of things you can't do online very easily. So in some senses we see developing here a picture of uh, the, the changing high street as it evolves and adapts to reflect the impact of competitive conditions like online trading and uh, economic conditions. Where are we likely to see this going in the next few years? Well, my view is that uh, we have to uh, expect a period of flux, a period of volatility over the next few years. Change has always been a feature of retailing, but of course we have many more factors affecting uh, that sector in high street locations than we've seen for many years. Over the next three or four, I think we're likely to see the emergence of perhaps a new equilibrium, but different places will be on different journeys. And I think as time goes on, uh, we're going to see very much more clearly the kinds of places that will emerge as winning places from a retail point of view, the kinds of places that will differentiate themselves in some way, or the kinds of places that become more convenience locations, uh, or the kinds of places that simply won't make it through this uh, transformational period of change. I think today's data starts to give us a, a good indication of the kind of sectors that are going to be winners and losers uh, over the next few years.